We say goodbye to a sunspot trio as we prepare for more fast solar wind, and the sun gets busy on its far side. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week dies down just a little bit, but the lull isn't going to last. As we take a look at our front-sided disk, you can see the Sunspot Trio region 28, 18, 20, and 21 is finally rotating off of the Earth-facing disk onto the Sun's far side, and that means that flare activity is beginning to die down a little bit, as well as the solar flux is dropping. But amateur radio operators and emergency responders don't worry about it. The solar flux is not going to stay dead for very long. It will rise again because we do have some more bright regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over the next few days or so. Also on top of that, we do have a few small coronal holes that are going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and these will be sending us some tiny pockets of fast solar wind. And we should see maybe a bump up in aurora activity, especially at high latitudes, but it's not going to last all that long before things begin to calm back down. And then across the Earth-facing disk, there isn't all that much, but you do see on the east limb, a few bright regions beginning to rotate into view. Those are those new regions, and I tell you, on the sun's far side, they're getting pretty busy. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as you can see, over the past week, the X-ray flux has definitely been going on a downward trend, and with it, you can see the solar flare activity has also been kind of dying out. This is because that trio of sunspot regions, region 28, 18, uh, 20 and 21 are now rotating off of the Earth-facing disk and onto the Sun's far side. And so there, that X-ray flux is definitely quieting down. And by proxy, that also means the solar flux is dropping. In fact, we're back to the low 70s for solar flux. So this means uh, marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side, and that means the band conditions are definitely not doing quite as well. But don't worry, these uh, conditions will rise back up again because we have those new regions rotating into Earth view probably over the, the next three to four days. So hopefully within the next week, we'll see that solar flux rise back into the mid-70s and we'll hang on to radio propagation in the marginal range. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see over the past week or so, we've actually had a little bit of activity. Now, back on the 25th, we got hit by a solar storm. It didn't last all that long, but it did bump us up to storm levels for a little while and brought some aurora down to mid-latitudes. Then things quieted down a little bit, and we got grazed by yet another solar storm, and we got hit by some more fast solar wind, and that bumped us back up to storm levels yet again. So we got some more gorgeous aurora. Now, since then, things have calmed down just a little bit, but as you notice, we're kind of hovering at unsettled conditions, and that's not because things have really quieted down. It's actually been a lot of activity. We've had solar storms launch to the east of us and launch to the west of us. It's just that none of them have hit Earth directly, so we've been kind of getting the wake a little bit. But this is going to change because we're expecting a, uh, that pocket of fast solar wind to hit us here over the next day or two, and that should bump us back up to storm levels at least at high latitudes. At mid-latitudes, we might reach an active condition you know, we'll, we'll see, but it could bring us a little bit more aurora, possibly down to mid-latitudes for a very, very short while before things calm down, and then we should be pretty much in the clear, and things should go all quiet. And because I haven't been able to give you any aurora highlights for a little bit, I'm going to give you some gorgeous aurora photos now from the solar storms that have been happening over the past couple weeks. There's been some amazing shows, like these gorgeous views in Norway. And believe it or not, this is during the twilight sun when aurora shouldn't even be visible up there. And we had gorgeous aurora in Sweden and it was seen in multiple places in Scotland. And we even had aurora dip down into the Netherlands. And as we go over the pond, the aurora views were seen in Iceland. And as we move into the Western Hemisphere, aurora was seen in many places in Canada. For instance, these gorgeous shots in Yellowknife. And it was also seen in Ontario. And Aurora was all over Manitoba. 
and it also dipped down into Saskatchewan. We saw it in multiple places in Saskatchewan. And of course, lots of photos from Alberta. And as we drop down into the United States, Aurora was also seen in North Dakota, multiple places in North Dakota, and in South Dakota. It was also seen in multiple places in Minnesota, near Wisconsin. It was also seen in Montana. And it was also seen in Washington. And of course it was seen with gorgeous views in Alaska. And we have a beautiful panoramic view right in space over central Canada. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun, well, a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo's disk, you can see that trio of sunspots leaving Stereo's view to the west. And just behind it, you can see that small coronal hole that's going to be sending us a pocket of fast solar wind here over the next day or two. And then after that, things get kind of quiet, except if you look at Stereo's east limb, look at those bright regions that are rotating into Stereo's view. And pow, right there, did you see that? That was a solar storm that was launched toward Mars. Now, luckily, this solar storm did not launch a radiation storm with it. And on top of that, it looks like the solar storm is actually going to go east of Mars. So luckily, Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter are still all in the clear to continue that month of ingenuity so that little Martian helicopter can keep doing its business. But meanwhile, what this means is that as these regions continue to rotate into Earth view, we may have yet another solar storm player. So Aurora photographers, hey, if you don't catch anything with that Aurora possibility here with the fast solar window, over the next day or two. We don't count yourself out. We may have yet another solar storm potential right there waiting to rotate into Earth view. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of a full moon on our way to a third quarter. And by the sixth, the moon will still be about 30% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the multiple pockets of fast solar wind from those coronal holes that are going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone. They're all during this week. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 50% chance of a major storm. And this could be sporadic, kind of on and off, easily over uh, a few days in through midweek and possibly longer before things settle down. Now at mid latitudes, we are only expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm. And again, this is going to be a little bit sporadic, kind of on and off a little because we have these pockets, multiple pockets of fast wind that will hit us. But things should settle down after about midweek. And uh, as long as we kind of roll with it a little bit, we should be pretty much back to normal by the end of the week. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We only have that sunspot trio on the Earth-facing disk, and it's beginning to rotate to the sun's far side, and it's kind of quieting down, so we really don't have any risk for big flares right now or radio blackouts. So GPS users on Earth's day side, you're all in the clear. There's no problem with that. However, we are looking at solar flux kind of dipping back down to the low low 70s. So we're in the marginal range for radio propagation right now. Luckily, over the next four or five days, we should see that solar flux really beginning to ramp up again. And that's because of those new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here, you know, like I said, within this week. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders just hang in there. We'll get through this little patch and things will start getting better again. Now, also because we are beginning to climb out of solar minimum, we've got a little bit of good news. The cost cosmic ray bath that we sit in, that, that flux is actually dropping a little bit. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you have dropped down to the minor range. This is the D1 level for cosmic radiation dose. So that's actually good news, but you still need to take, uh, take these precautions and put them into your flight plans if you happen to be a high risk.
So the space weather this week is settling down a little bit. Now we do have a couple pockets of fast solar wind that we're expecting from some coronal holes that are rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. So Aurora photographers, you could be in for a little bit of a bumpy ride. At high latitudes, you should be getting some decent Aurora views easily in through midweek. But if at mid latitudes, well, it's gonna be kind of a sporadic show as the Aurora kind of waxes and wanes a little bit. So only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now the lucky thing is, is that we do have those new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next few days. And it looks like one of them at least is a solar storm producer. So if you don't get any aurora this time around, well, who knows, maybe in about a week or so, we might get more chances for aurora. So we'll keep you tuned on that one. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, things aren't looking so great for you for the moment. We do have that trio of sunspots that's rotating off of the Earth-facing disk, and that means that the solar flux has dropped back into the low 70s. We're at the hairy edge of marginal for radio propagation on Earth's day side. So just hang in there because that new set of, of sunspots that are going to be rotating into Earth view, they, those will boost that solar flux easily back up into the mid 70s here in about oh, maybe four days or so and maybe even higher. It really depends upon how bright these regions are and how much activity they give they bring us. So just hang in there. Radio propagation on Earth's day side will come back, I promise. Now you GPS users, well, you know, things are looking pretty good for you. The solar flux is staying reasonably low and the solar storms that we're gonna be getting from these fast solar wind aren't too strong. So as long as you stay away from the dawn dusk uh, terminators and away from Aurora on Earth's night side, your GPS reception should be pretty top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.